All right, welcome to the Georgia Lacrosse Officials Association presentation on personal fouls. We're using the NFHS Boys Lacrosse rules, and this is part of our two-man uh, mechanics training program. All right, so lacrosse allows body checking. This is rule 415. Uh, a player in possession of the ball or within five yards of a loose ball from the may body check up an opponent from the front or the side, from the shoulder to the waist, two hands on the cross, right? So possession from the front or the side, right? From the shoulders to the waist, um, you know, this is a sport that allows contact, okay? And so, you know, you're going to see guys bumping into each other. <laughs> Literally, the meaning of this game is they bump hips, okay? So that's, that's important to recognize. This is not a collision sport. This is not football, but we allow contact. Now, what is illegal in one game might not be illegal in another. When we as officials talk about consistency, what we're really talking about is consistency through the game. Have we allowed the same play for both sides throughout the contest, okay? Because different games have different what we call temperatures. Um, the level of play, the physical ability of players, the rules that we're officiating under. It, what is the game? Is it tight? Is it a blowout? Is it chippy, right? These are all things that are going to factor factor into sort of what we are doing uh, when we're doing stuff, right? So, um, you know, this is a big physical play in the NCAA semifinals, right? Shoulder to shoulder, uh, right in the front. Um, you know, that that's technically a legal hit, right? Um, now, there are some rules that we'll talk about, unnecessary roughness and defenseless player. Uh, in the college game, they don't have that. Um, but you know, you're gonna see physical play and it's important that you understand that it's not just what the rules are, but these factors here that are gonna help us determine what's going on. Um, youth and body checking. Uh, U6 and U8, no body checking at all, right? Think of it as basketball. U10 and up, no takeout checks. You can't put somebody on their ass. Um, we're also going to limit the amount of space we have for, for this kind of contact to three yards instead of five. You've got to be in the upright position at all times when body checking an opponent. Uh, at whatever level, you've got to have both hands on the cross. Um, and at the youth level, you ten and up, you've got to have your feet um, uh, on the ground throughout the contact. You can't launch yourself. U8 through U12, you're allowed legal holds and legal pushes. Right. Again, you can legally push somebody from the front or the side um, within, you know, five yards or in this case, three yards of a loose ball. Um, you can legally hold somebody if you're within five yards of a loose ball or in this case, three. Um, you can box somebody out. You can redirect an opponent uh, as a defenseman. Right. There can be incidental contact. Um, when you're checking with the cross, um, you need to be checking somebody who is in possession or be within five yards of a loose ball in an attempt to dislodge the ball. This is key. You can't just whack away at somebody's arm. Um, the goal needs to be to dislodge the ball. Uh, and it's important to note that by definition, the gloved hand on the cross is considered part of the cross. I do not care how hard you hit an opponent's cross um, in a varsity game, right? Um, so here we got a great, uh, great check here. Um, knocks the stick out of his hands, knocks the ball out, picks the ball up, and off we go, right? He hammers that kid's cross. Nothing illegal about that. Um, at U8 through U12, uh, you're allowed to do lift check, poke checks, and downward checks. Uh, downward checks should be initiated from below the shoulder. Um, you can poke the bottom hand when it's on the stick. Um, and you can lift the bottom hand when it's on the stick, right? This is just playing lacrosse, okay? So personal fouls, right? These are fouls of a serious nature. We're talking about player safety and conduct. Um, play that's unnecessarily rough, dangerous, or unsportsmanlike. And you are going to get a one, two, or three minute suspension from the game, uh, often at the discretion of the officials, but certain rules have very specific um, times on them. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, this is where we really need to step in. We cannot prevent players from doing illegal things, but we need to penalize them when they do, 
Okay, so we're talking about slashes, cross check, trips, illegal body checks, targeting, head and neck, unnecessary roughness, and sports like conduct, illegal equipment and cross, um, and ejection. So the cross check, um, and we'll sort of begin this by talking about, uh, you know, contact by with the cross. Um, may not check with the part of the handle between the hands by thrusting away or holding it extended from the body. Okay. Now you are allowed to play a defender using the part of the cross between your hands, um, as long as it is no more than shoulder width. Um, and you can do what we call a cross check hold. What we're looking for in a cross check is violent contact that is thrusting away, or you are holding the cross out in front of you and running through your opponent. Okay. It is vicious or deliberate. Um, we're not just looking at contact, okay? So let's watch here. Number 24 in red gets absolutely hammered um, by uh, number 8 in white. Um, you can see the hands extended. You can see the thrusting motion. He's running full speed. Right? That is what we're talking about. That's a pretty classic example of a cross check. Um, slashing. Swinging the cross at an opponent's body or cross with deliberate viciousness or reckless abandon, a definite blow or strike, uh, striking the player in the face, groin, neck, chest, back, head, leg, you know, all of these places that you're not allowed to hit them. Um, you know, so here is an example. That's a pretty clear example of hammering somebody right in the leg, um, and uh, you know we should have a flag on this. Uh, here's another example. Right, right in the nuts. That is definitely a slash. Okay. Right in the knee. I mean, these are these are fouls that kind of jump out at you, right? Um, we're not trying to dislodge the ball here clearly in any of these situations. Um, uh, this is an incidental contact, um, uh, which is allowed. And it's vicious, deliberate, definitive blows. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for here. Here's another example. Right, gets them right in the in the chest and then right in the chest again. So we've got two flags on the play. Second flag kills the play. It's a white two. Boom, right in the hip. Second one misses, right? But the 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 first one comes down right on the hip. We are not trying to dislodge the ball. Um, you know, this is clearly a slash. So there are some exceptions to slashing, okay? And the first one is scooping a loose ball. If you're trying to pick up a loose ball and you come up and you make contact that otherwise might be illegal, you hit somebody in the face mask, you, you, you hit him in the knee, um, uh, even with some force, if you are really just attempting to scoop a loose ball, that is an exception to the slashing rule. The other two are passing and shooting, okay? So if you are making a pass or shooting and you follow through and hit the player in a place where you're not supposed to hit your opponent, um, that is an exception to the slashing rule. Now, that being said, um, this is not a license to foul. OK, so if you feel as if a player is trying to get out of this by using this exception, you can still call a penalty. Um, but if you're actually shooting or actually trying to make a pass, these are exceptions. The fourth exception is the gloved hand on the cross, right? Uh, the gloved hand on the cross is considered part of the cross. And, uh, you know, that being said, a defensive player may not repeatedly strike the gloved hand of an opponent if they do not have reasonable access to a player's cross or make no attempt to dislodge the ball. OK, um, so let's make sure that we are really trying to go for the ball and dislodge the ball. Now, in this example over here, we're going to hit the gloved hand. But a little ice pick check here. 
comes right down on the glove, knocks the thing out, immediately disengages. They pick the ball up. We're going the other way. It's a great check. Uh, one-handed checks. Now, one-handed checks are often illegal at the youth level below the, I think, U14. Um, but one-handed checks are legal at the high school level. It's a question of where does it land and with what severity does it land. Okay? Um, the important thing with these checks are is that there's going to be contact, right? So just because there is contact does not mean you have to throw the flag for a slash at the high school level, okay? Um, you can have incidental contact that is not violent. This is why they're wearing arm pads and this is why they're wearing helmets. It is not that we are worried that contact might occur. We know that contact will occur. So there's some level of contact that is going to be legal um, uh, that we are going to allow. What we are looking for, again, is the vicious, violent, deliberate striking blow that hits something other than the cross or the gloved hand on the cross. Right. Tripping. Uh, probably the worst written rule in uh, any sport, in my opinion. Obstructing an opponent at or below the waist with the cross, hands, feet, arms, or by any positive primary action if the obstructing player is on his feet or secondary action if not. I don't particularly know what positive primary action or secondary action is. What I do know is that we know that these fouls are safety fouls. Um, so we are looking for, are we worried about the player's safety? That's the first thing we need to consider. And secondly, the opponent needs to do something. So just running over and getting your feet tangled is not automatically tripping, okay? Um, here is a pretty clear example of tripping. Now, I don't know if that's positive primary action, but I know he did something and he forced that player to the ground uh, using his cross. Here's another example, right? Swing and a miss, hit the feet, knock him to the ground. You know, here we're definitely talking a trip. Now, there are exceptions to tripping, tripping over a player's own cross. If you fall over your own cross, it's not a trip. Uh, a legal check that causes a player to fall over his own cross, falling over the leg of a stationary defender, and tripping over the cross of a player attempting to scoop a loose ball. So let's watch this. Um, Green's going to lay a nice check. And as a result of it, he hits him right on the cross. White falls over, but White actually manages to pop back up and pick the ball up, right? This is a great no call. So, illegal body checks. We know what a legal body check is. You've got two hands on the cross. You've got uh, contact um, above the waist, below the shoulder, from the front or the side, and you're within five yards of a loose ball, and the opponent doesn't have any part of his body other than his feet on the ground. If you don't meet any of those parameters, you've got a legal body check. Okay. That is late. That is in the back. Um, uh, you know... So we're not within five yards of a loose ball. It's late, and we hit him in the back. That is a classic illegal body check. Now, we can also call unnecessary roughness, right? Excessive violent holding and pushing, avoidable or late, deliberate or an excessive act with the body or cross, delivered with a punching blow, uh, deliberate and excessive contact with the player setting a screen, um, in this case, if a player is setting a screen and the defender does not see him and runs through him, it's a no call. Um, if they do see him and they recognize that he's there, they are not allowed to blow him up. Okay, so this is a classic. It might be from the front or the side. It might be below the shoulders and above the waist, but it, it is deliberate and excessive. Okay, um, so... Unnecessary roughness may include a legal check. Let's take a look at this. All right. We got a player launching themselves. It's shoulder to shoulder. Um, but this can, this can very easily be called unnecessary roughness. 
right? Um, and again, once you've set that bar, that's where it is, right? Anything that looks like that is now going to be a flag. So let's get into checks involving the head and neck. Um, player shall not initiate excessive, violent, or uncontrolled slash to the head and neck. You can also have a body check. You cannot use your head to um, uh, to initiate a body check. Uh, think of it as spearing. Um, uh, this can be called on offense or on um, uh, the defense. It's a one to three minute non-releasable penalty with the potential for ejection. Indirect contact begins legally and sort of slides up, um, becomes a one-minute non-releasable foul. It's sort of a good lacrosse play gone bad. You're attempting to play lacrosse, but it gets away from you. Uh, direct contact to the head or neck, it never started legal. It was always illegal. And so we're going to go two to three-minute um, uh, non-releasable foul with the potential for ejection. Okay, um, So let's watch this example here. So watch 99, lower his head, headbutt the player uh, defending him directly in the face mask. To me, this is a three-minute ejection foul, right? Could have run could have run around him, could have run through the shoulder, um, could have actually played lacrosse, but instead decided to use his head as a weapon. This is direct contact to another player's head using your own head. Um, and so we've got multiple people that we're worried about in terms of safety. Uh, this is at least a three-minute, if not an ejection for me. That being said, it's important that everybody listens. Um, rule 5-4-2 situation. A1 attempts to check B1 stick, but instead... A1 stick A makes slight contact with B1's head or neck. B strikes B1 head or neck. Okay, in A, no foul. This is a brush. You can make contact with another player's head and it'd be a no call. Right? Again, what we are looking for is excessive, violent, uncontrolled, thrusting, definitive strike or blow. We are not looking for a tap or a doink. Okay? Um, in B, slashing one minute releasable foul. You can have contact to the head that's just a slash. It is not automatically a one to three minute possible ejection foul that's non-releasable. If the slash was excessive, violent, or uncontrolled, at least a two minute non-releasable foul shall be called. So we've got some options here, okay? All contact to the head is not illegal. We are looking for severity, we are looking for, you know, some of these words, you know, one of these multi-minute fouls should jump off the page at you. It is not a tap or a doink or a regular lacrosse play that seems to have gotten a little squirrely. All right, so let's take a look here. Right, the white player, um, uh, you know, he goes to, to, to sort of Give him a cross-check hold, which is completely legal. Play a little defense on him, and it slides up uh, right into the neck. So um, watch number four here. It just slides up into the back of the neck. It's not, it, it, it's, it's not the worst, right? This is why this is the one-minute non-releasable penalty, right? This is a, a, he was trying to play lacrosse. He was not attempting to injure his opponent, um, but he, he catches him in the neck, right? We're going to, we're going to throw that flag every time. Also, please note the lead official is an excellent position here. Um, we've seen this clip before, right? So again, that, that, that's a legal contact right there. Like by rule, if we're going to be real picky, is he not hitting the cross? Yeah, there's a push from the front. That's legal. That's on the gloved hand. This is where we got a problem. All right, we've got an injured player in the scrimmage area. Watch 59. 59 is going to come in here. You'll see it in slow-mo. He's the red player on the far right, and he is just going to ear hole this kid. Now... You will hear people say, he's got to play the ball. That is not true. 
There's nothing in the rule book that says when you're when you've got a loose ball near you that the only thing you are allowed to do is to play the loose ball. Uh, if you've ever done a man ball drill, he is allowed to body check that player and prevent him from getting the ball so that one of his teammates can get the ball, like what is happening right now. What he is not allowed to do is to initiate direct violent contact to the white player's head. This is at least a three-minute foul. Okay? And we're going to kill the play because we've got an injured player in the scrimmage area. There are some restrictions on making contact with defenseless players. So you cannot body check a player from the blind side. They have no idea that you're coming. Uh, this is going to be a two or three minute non-releasable penalty with the possibility of an ejection. If somebody's got his head down playing a loose ball, yes, you can make contact with him, but you cannot destroy him. Okay. Um, on the ground in a defenseless position, you can't hammer somebody who's engaged in a face-off or laying on the ground, okay? You can play their stick, you can still play lacrosse, but you cannot body check them in a violent manner, okay? Again, we're not just looking for contact. We are looking for violent contact in these particular situations. So here's an example. So we're going to spin around, right? So red comes from a distance red the hit is high the player turns at the last second has no idea that he's going to get contacted this is a classic case of defenseless player here's everybody's eyes are on the ground they're all trying to scoop a loose ball right boom you know here comes here comes here comes the hammer. This is a foul that we've got to get. Again, everybody's scooping a loose ball. Right? Doesn't matter that the contact was shoulder to shoulder or any of that stuff. He is not looking. His head is down. This is really violent contact. Um, this has got to be a flag. This is a multi-minute foul. Uh, here's an example of a buddy pass. Right? So the player has to kind of extend, isn't really able to look up field, doesn't see this contact coming. Can number four stand there and have him run into him? Can there be contact? Can he check the stick? Sure. Can he lower the hammer like this? No. Here's another example of a buddy pass. Goalie's going to make an outlet pass to number nine here who turns and gets drilled. And you see the flag come out immediately. Okay, really important. Got to get this flag. And then here's a wing guy. Kid's looking at the ball, trying to scoop a loose ball. Um, can't do that. Targeting. Targeting is a different animal altogether. Targeting is, is not a lacrosse play gone wrong. Uh, targeting is intentionally trying to target the head and neck of a player for the purpose of making violent contact. You are trying to injure your opponent. We are not playing lacrosse. We are trying to injure somebody. And this is a three-minute non-releasable with the possibility of ejection. Okay? So let's look at this example right here. I want you to focus on 36 black. Ball is 20 yards away, and he just rolls up and hammers this guy in the back of the neck, right? This has got to be the off-ball official getting this call, right? We've talked about the off-ball official. Um, you know, the, the lead here is watching the, the ball come around from X, um, from behind the cage. Uh, he can't be watching what 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 this guy's doing. Um, it's got to be the trail official really seeing this play. Okay. Here's another example. So we're going to have legal conduct. We got a little bit of a hold there. Right. He doesn't like it. So he takes a swing and then, you know, he just lowers the boom on this kid. That to me is an ejection. We're not playing lacrosse. You're just you're just literally trying to injure your opponent. Okay. 
Um, you were guilty of a hold. He's a little upset. Um, and then we got to get in there real quick and separate all this. Okay. This is tough to see, but you're going to see if the top left corner, you're going to see one of the players in black substitute from the box and just come in and hammer the ball carrier. Um, all right, so here we go. He's not looking at all. This is a cross check to the back that is it's a little high, but there's there's this is not a lacrosse play here. You're not allowed to do that. And so, to me, this is a th this is at least a three minute targeting foul. Non releasable unsportsmanlike conducts, right? This is where you you argue with the official over a call, threatening profane or obscene language. You drop an f bomb. My general rule of thumb on language is if you're directing it to yourself or your teammates, and only you guys can hear it on the field, I'm just going to tell you to knock it off. Um, as soon as you can hear it in the third row, um, we got no we got no place for that, right? Um, taunting, uh, calling undue attention to oneself. If you are taunting your opponent, that's one thing. If you are celebrating and it is not directed against your opponent, I don't have a problem with it. Um, throwing a cross at the ball, player, coach, or official. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh, and then and any other act considered unsportsmanlike by the officials is a one to three minute locked in foul. So here we go. All right. Uh, yeah. The tackle is definitely any act considered unsportsmanlike conduct. And then we've got fighting here, uh, people leaving the bench, all sorts of stuff. Okay. Uh, here's an example of why it's really important to be a great dead ball official. Um, we have a, a, an official here who's in great position, and he is escorting a player off the field. Right? who hammers his opponent with a sucker punch, right? So even though you're doing your best, um, you've got a lot going on here. This is why we need to pay attention when we are looking at mixed colors, okay? It's not when we're playing lacrosse that stupid stuff tends to happen. It's when we're not playing lacrosse that stupid stuff tends to happen. You need to be focused. Um, throwing the cross uh, at the uh, at a player, ball, or other game personnel, regardless of contact, is a one, two, or three minute non-releasable unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, this is South Carolina Georgia Tech in the MCLA semifinals from a couple of years ago, and we're going to have a broken clear here, and the goalie flips the cross up in the air at the ball, and that is a that's an unsportsmanlike conduct foul. All right, there are also releasable unsportsmanlike conducts, okay? Repeatedly committing the same technical foul. For example, you jump on the faceoff every single time. Um, failing to return immediately to the field while legally in the game. Substitute deliberately failing to comply with the rules for entering the field of play. You've told them, hey, you got to buckle up your chin strap, put your mouthpiece in, and they keep coming on the field. Um, I, in all of these situations, preventative officiating is really important. Warn him, tell him to buckle it up, tell him to put his mouthpiece in. But also maybe mention to the coach. If you have to talk to a player more than once, mention it to their coach. Let them take care of it for you. Because then when you throw the flag, the player knows you've warned them. The coach knows you've warned them. Nobody's surprised. Right? It's really important. Also, a releasable unsportsmanlike conduct for a defensive player um, entering their crease with the intent of blocking a shot or acting as a goalkeeper. Um and the second violation of that coach obstructing play coach on the field, right? It is not fun to be looking one way and running full speed and then slam into somebody who's, you know, standing on the field for no reason whatsoever. Um, so this is a uh, one, two or three minute um, uh, releasable um, foul. And then finally, the nuclear option is ejection. Right. Um, striking or attempting to strike somebody, leaving the bench during a fight. I'll talk about that in a sec. Tobacco. Uh, if you get a second non-releasable unsportsmanlike conduct, you are automatically ejected. 
uh, releasables don't count towards this. And then anything that officials deem flagrant misconduct, okay? Um, you throw a punch, you're gone. Doesn't matter if you hit anybody. Now, I distinguish between a punch and a shove. There is a lot of shoving that goes on in a lacrosse game, and it even happens after you blow the whistle. Throwing a punch is a different animal altogether. Leaving the bench during a fight. Um, you know, when a fight breaks out and you see a bunch of guys uh, sort of step onto the field, that to me is not enough to eject absolutely anybody. Anybody getting involved um, in a fight and participating in the fight, definitely we're going to eject them, right? Uh, you can often stand back and just take a take a list of numbers, right? But a kid who runs on the field, grabs his buddy and hustles him off the field, that guy's actually trying to help you, okay? Um, so pay attention to that. Now, the procedure for this is going to be a little different, right? So here's an example of players throwing punches. Um, so we got a little shoving here, and then Blue just starts to go Muhammad Ali and then Superfly Snuka on him. Note the white player never does anything. Um, now, I will say the officials are not paying attention to what is happening on the right-hand side here, right? And so they need to get involved and separate mixed colors. Um, here's another example of what I think is an ejectable foul. This is flying across the crease at a thousand miles an hour, extending the cross, thrusting it into the neck and face of an opponent, right? That to me is an ejectable foul. So, um, oh, here's another example. Oh. So we've got a push here, but we are in mixed colors. We have got to get officials right into this situation immediately because now we've got a coach engaging with um, a player and and shoving folks, okay? So uh, you got to get in there when this stuff happens, okay? Um, but a, a coach throwing a punch at a player is, is, is an ejectable offense as, as much as a player throwing a punch at a player. If you are going to eject a player, a substitute, or a non-playing team member, that's a three-minute non-releasable, and the player needs to leave the premises if there's somebody to supervise them. Otherwise, they are confined to the bench. Um, if you eject a coach, it is a one-minute non-releasable penalty. Essentially, we do not want to penalize the team for the behavior of a coach. Uh, as much as we would for the behavior of a player. Um, and the coach must leave the premises, the bench and the field area. Um, now, if any of these disqualifications or ejections happen, the first thing you want to do is call your assigner um, for a high school game uh, or a youth game. If you're the referee, you're going to fill out an incident report. Um, this goes to the board and all assigners, and then we forward this information to the leagues or GHSA. But if you have something like an ejection, you are going to need to call your assigner because uh, they're going to already be getting phone calls and text messages about what just happened, right? We want to be able to pull the video. We want to be able to interview all the members of the crew. We want to find out what happened. Um, but let us know that something has happened. If you don't know who your assigner is, you can always contact me. Hey, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, again, I'm Greg Height, and uh, these presentations are all available at galaxref.com. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, concerns, um, or would just like to chat. Would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.